Now, since we filmed the rest of the section, there's been a very exciting development in the understanding of the short gamma ray bursts. And this has come from gravity wave astronomy, which didn't even exist as a field when I first started filming this whole thing. Now, gravity waves are caused whenever big, massive things accelerate like crazy. I'm going to talk much more about gravity waves in the violent universe part of this course. But basically, whenever you get neutron stars or black holes accelerating like crazy, which often means they're about to collide with something else, you get ripples of space-time that come out. And these ripples distort everything they pass through. The distortion is kind of like it makes things get wider and then taller and wider and taller. And that can principle we picked up on the Earth. The only problem is these changes in shape on Earth are incredibly small. However, detectors, uh, particularly the more modern ones like LIGO and Virgo, which again we'll talk more about in the Van Universe course, use laser interferometers and are actually able to measure over four kilometer baselines changes of length of less than the size of a proton. Absolutely incredible that they can do it. But this is enough so that in the last few years they've been able to pick up gravity waves as they pass through. Now most of the gravity waves they've picked up so far have been due to black hole black hole mergers, which is actually an interesting story in itself. We didn't expect to see so many of those things, and we'll talk about that in the Violent Universe course. But they have now detected, as at the time of um, recording this, uh, early 2020, they've recorded two neutron star neutron star mergers. And one of these has turned out to also be a short gamma ray burst. So here's what the data looks like. So what we've got here, the three different detectors. You need three different detectors to get the triangulation on the sky of where the gravity waves are coming from. So the two LIGO detectors in the US and the Virgo one in Italy. And each plot shows vertically the frequency and horizontally the time before the burst. And there's sound effects to go with this. So here's what the data looks like. Most of the time they're just picking up noise. All sorts of other things, thermal vibrations, quantum vibrations, random electronic signals. However, you may just about be able to see a little line appearing over here, and maybe just over there. And that is caused by the neutron stars getting closer and closer. And the frequency goes up, and finally gets stronger and stronger. You start seeing it in both the top two graphs. And you hear whoop sound as the frequency goes up. That's called a chirp. And that is caused by the two compact objects getting closer and closer and closer until they merge. As they get closer, they spin faster. So it's a very characteristic shape. Now, it wasn't seen um, by the Virgo detector, but that in itself was interesting because the non-detection there combined with the other two detections allowed them to work out roughly where on the sky it was coming from. Here's a simulation from the Max Planck Institute for Gravitation Physics of what was causing this. So here we have our two neutron stars, the gravity waves coming out from them, and as they get closer and closer they go faster and faster, you see the frequency increasing, they start distorting, they merge, this is where they have been their strongest gravity waves, and then settle down to a very rapidly spinning, probably larger neutron star or black hole. So, that was exciting enough. We've actually seen two neutron stars merge. What was more exciting was that 1.74 seconds later, a gamma ray burst was picked up by the satellite, the Fermi Gamma Ray Observatory. Now, that very short time delay is, it's, we think it's coming from the same thing because Fermi again only has a very vague direction on the sky, but that seemed to overlap with the gravity waves. So we think it's probably the same event, and 1.74 seconds seems very short. And that probably 1.74 second delay is just the time it took for the light to get out of the blast wave. So in fact it's remarkable, this is something over 100 million light years away, and over 100 million light years the gravity waves and the X gamma rays, the electromagnetic radiation, arrived within 1.74 seconds of each other. And that's actually ruled out lots of quantum gravity theories that said that gravity should go at a slightly different speed. In fact, the 
gamma rays were detected first. The, it was only a few hours later that people went and reanalyzed the gravity wave data and found that this was going on and then realized the coincidence. At that point, the alarm went out and optical astronomers around the world pointed their telescopes at this very big location and succeeded in spotting an object that was changing in this part of the sky. Now it's uh, galaxy NGC 4993, which is 144 million light years away, redshift to 0.097, and there was a dot that faded away. And when you get spectra of it, you can see it starts off a very blue spectrum and then fades and gets redder. It has a whole series of very broad dips in the spectrum. These very broad dips are produced a very fast moving gas. For a long time, people couldn't work out what elements was causing them. They could tell it was something moving very fast, about 10% of the speed of light, because the motion inwards and outwards smears out Doppler shifts the lines. But eventually they figured out that these were due to heavy elements, in particular strontium was identified in this. So it does indeed look like we have the merger of two neutron stars producing a whole blast wave of extremely neutron-rich elements. So, in this one case, we've got really good data on what's producing one of these short gamma ray bursts. And it is indeed, as we thought earlier, the merger of compact objects, in this case two neutron stars, and it did produce a bunch of very heavy elements, which indeed are what you need to go out and enrich the whole universe. Now only one of these has been seen, seen that is by both gravity wave and gamma ray. However, several other gamma ray sources have been seen which have very similar properties, just haven't been picked up by gravity wave detectors. And just a few days ago, another gravity wave neutron star neutron star merger was seen, but not picked up at any other wavelength. So probably there are a lot of these things going on. Trying to get all these observations in sync is very, very difficult. But this is a very promising way forward for the study of these short uh, gamma ray bursts which seem to be neutron star neutron star mergers.